Modules. You know, I received a question from a viewer about modules. How do you insert them? How do you use them? And uh, it's a really good question. And it's something that not everybody fully understands. And so I'd like to take a few minutes just to talk about modules, take a look at modules and how we can use them. So the first thing is, uh, where do you define whether something is going to be a module or not? Uh, well, I guess really the first thing is, what is a module? Uh, kernel objects can either be a yes, meaning they're built into the kernel, or they can be a M for a module. A module is something that uh, is loaded externally. It's built externally from the kernel, and it can be loaded into the kernel at runtime. These modules are kernel objects that can be used uh, to control devices, uh, to allow special features, and uh, really, it, there's a lot of handy reasons to use modules, and there's a lot of good reasons not to as well. So I'd like to talk about that in a minute. You specify whether a module or whether an object is built internally into the kernel or as a module in your default config. So here we have our default config, and we're looking at IO schedulers, and we see we have new test, deadline, CFQ, and FIOPS. Well, notice that FIOPS, CFQ, deadline, and NUP are all equals Y. That means they're built into the kernel itself. No matter what, wherever you flash this kernel, it comes with these in it. The test, however, is a module. It's equals M, meaning it's built externally to the kernel and can be a kernel object that's inserted to the kernel when it needs to be used. So, uh, why did they do that? for this particular one, or why did I leave it that way when I'm building my own kernel? I did that because the usual user does not need IOSCED test. That's really a maintenance thing, and it's for testing your IO schedulers and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's loaded as a module. That way it can be loaded if it needs to be, but most of the time doesn't need to take up any sort of space, RAM, resources, or... Uh, you know, be in the way, essentially. Now, where do modules get put? If we find modules in here, we'll see that the default config list puts them in lib modules, and then uh, there's a config there. So modules, if they get built, um, when you build your kernel, using your source like I just did here, just built the uh, boot image. Uh, it makes a folder called system with lib and modules in it, and these are all the modules that go with the kernel. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people that say, oh, well, I built this kernel, but now the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Question for you, was the Wi-Fi a module? If it is, did you only flash the boot image or did you flash the boot image and these modules? So if you're going to use a module, you need to make sure that your zip that flashes the kernel also flashes system lib modules to the system lib modules of the phone. Otherwise, you're not going to have the modules. Or you need to tell the user that they need to copy these modules over to that folder. Now, I prefer the zip method because then there's no way to mess it up for the end user. However, uh, your needs may vary. So, modules. Can I just build a module for anything? Well, not exactly. Let's take a look back at our def config. Notice that for modules to be built, you have to define that modules is a yes. Otherwise, the kernel will ignore any option of a module, and it won't know what to do with one if you try to load it. It just it won't be modular. So essentially, think of saying config modules yes as a... Uh, setting uh, you know, some Lego spots on the top of the kernel for you to plug in these modules like they were Lego blocks. Okay. Now with that, you need a couple other options. Uh, the next option, which is not set, is to force load. Do you want to allow the end user to force load something that should not be loaded? And you can say yes or no to that. Um, I prefer to say no, because typically you want to load things that are properly built for the proper kernel. However, there are situations where you may want to do this. Uh, again, I still don't recommend it. 
uh, module unload. You have to be able to unload the module if you loaded it. Otherwise, you'll be able to load the module, and you won't be able to unload it until you reboot the machine. Seems kind of silly, but there is there is some method to that madness there. Do you want to be able to force unload it? And this is usually yes. Uh, this means do you want to force unload something that's still currently in use? So I say, yes, I want you to force unloading this Wi-Fi driver because I want to turn the Wi-Fi off. I want to stop Wi-Fi activity. And this makes it allowed to force unload it to say stop, and then the Wi-Fi will just quit working. So you want that option because you want to be able to stop something from from being driven. Then you have mod versions. Do you want to allow your modules to only be loaded if they're the proper version, the proper version for this kernel? And I always say yes. Uh, I think that's really important because you can mess that up pretty bad. Now this next portion right here is about module signatures. When you build the kernel, for instance, when I just built this kernel right now, it made the modules actually they're right here and when it made these modules it signs those modules and it signs them with a hash that it made earlier notice here's your modules again right there uh, with a hash that it made earlier somewhere in here you'd have to go back and look at it to find it um, but the, it makes a hash and then it signs these modules uh, to say this module is the proper module for this kernel because I signed it when I made it. What that means though is you cannot flash a module that wasn't made the same time this kernel was unless you happen to have the same key uh, which is a little bit complicated to do. It's easier just to build it with the kernel at the same time. So for sure any uh, self-respecting vendor out there is going to say module signature equals yes. Because they don't want you to flash your home brewed version of kexec so that you can flash your very own kernel. Um, however, for yourself, do you need modules to be signed? That's kind of up to you. I think it's a huge security risk if you say no. But that's, that's really up to you. Uh, with that, how are modules used, and by looking at how they're used, we can understand maybe a little better on uh, why module signing is important. So we know the modules are put in system lib modules, and I'm here on my blocks uh, two, and I, we've flashed another kernel that we made when we uh, overclocked the GPU. But these modules that are in this directory are the original modules that came with the original kernel. Well, not the original original, but the, another kernel that I built when I built the ROM. So if we look in this folder, we see that we have all of our kernel objects. These kernel objects can be flashed as modules. So for instance, if you want to flash a module, you say insmod, and then you say uh, whatever the name of the module is, testiosked.ko. Now right now it said no way, format error, not letting you flash this because this is not the right module for your kernel. It's not signed properly. Now sometimes uh, you'll see a different error which may be about uh, version magic or something like that. That's when it's the wrong version of kernel. Okay, So it's not right for your kernel. So it won't let you flash that either unless you use force loading and only if force loading is enabled by the kernel. So uh, we have these modules, we can't flash them. So it's really important that when you make your kernel, if it does include modules, that you make or add them to your flashable zip to put them in the right place so that way everything works like it's supposed to. Uh, something else to consider is how, if a module is loaded, how do you see what modules are available or loaded right now? And if we type lsmod, that tells us what modules are loaded right now. Notice that there are no modules loaded right now in my, my phone. But if there was one, it would be listed. And then there's also rm mod, or to remove a module that's loaded currently. Now right now I don't have any modules loaded, so I really can't, uh, I can't unload one. But I just wanted to show you the tool was available. So 
you know, we kind of talked about a few of the different reasons why you might have modules and uh, some uh, advantages of them being that, you know, that you can save space in your kernel, you can turn things on and off by loading and unloading modules. Uh, do remember that will not control the power for that device, but it will uh, stop the function of it. And then you can also uh, hide functions from normal users by only allowing super users to insmod the proper module into the kernel to use whatever tool they need to use. Um, so a couple of questions with that then. Why not build everything as modules? Well, I don't know. I guess that's really up to you. For one, it makes the ROM bigger, uh, and it will make your kernel zip flash bigger if you're going to have all of these modules that you're going to flash that most people probably won't use at all anyways. For instance, the ones that are here, uh, I'm pretty sure nobody has ever used the test IO sked KO uh, kernel object module on the blocks too perhaps during testing at the factory and that's it. So why the end user would want that at all, I don't know. You really don't need it um, at all. Uh, also, when you do make things into modules, uh, they may have other dependencies, and so that will definitely make things uh, bigger and more complicated. It takes longer to compile, and if it serves no function, there's really no reason to have it. Uh, you will see people um, that, for instance, if their bootloader is locked and they want to get around that by flashing their own kernel so they can have their own custom ROM, a lot of times they'll try to hack uh, at this kind of what might be considered a weaker point than the boot loader uh, is by hacking the kernel and trying to fake the mod version and the signature to get their own kernel module loaded to either perform some function or to uh, actually, um, you know, uh, run something like kexec so they can then switch over to their very own kernel at runtime. So you'll, you'll see things like that. You'll see that in the threads as well. So it's really important if you're going to build modules, make sure that you are including them in your flash. Otherwise, they're not going to uh, appear in the uh, final ROM, and then it won't be able to load any of the modules that it needs to run the things that it does. So what's an advantage of not loading a module? Instead of saying module on something to say yes, the advantage of that is it's built into the kernel. You don't have to worry about flashing it to the user space by putting in system lib modules, and, uh, and it's just always available all the time. Um, downside is it does make your kernel a little bigger. So six of one, half dozen of the other, what really matters to you or not uh, is something you'll have to consider while you're building your kernels. But I just wanted to take a minute to talk about modules because we did have a question about it and it was a great question and hopefully this is useful to uh, that viewer and others uh, when you consider modules and how they work.